actually know. Pants. I didn't even wear these. They must have fallen off the hanger. They do that sometimes. Um, he's chill sometimes. Sometimes he's not. He's been having some tummy issues lately, so I don't know if he's just... I think he got upset when I wasn't working, or I was working too much. Um, that needs to get washed. But... Oh, this one stayed folded. That's nice. Fell off the shelf. <laughs> what about them? Would you like me to fix? Genuinely curious. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. You never know. I don't know what it is with closets and cats either, but like all of my socks are now on the floor. That's so lovely. It's a trend. So funny. <laughs> Was I supposed to laugh at that? Was it supposed to be funny? You're not Scottish, but you want to wear kilts. Is that wrong? I'm not the person to answer that. Um, I would definitely speak to somebody who does. Uh, and what pattern should you look for? It depends on what you want to do. Um, Stuart Tartan is generally an easy one to go with because that was the royal families. So it is generally an easy one to wear ask somebody who makes them if they find that it would be disrespectful. Generally, the idea and the feedback that I've gotten from everyone is it is not disrespectful in any way. It is cool to share culture like that, and generally they're cool about it, and they will tell you which one you should wear or which one would look good on you because sometimes it just boils down to what looks good on you and what doesn't. But as a historian... Nah, I think it's cool. Do what you want to do. Mm, I forgot I pinned this. No, I just am a Western European historian. I have no connections to any of that. I am German and Polish. Mostly German, though. I just happen to be a historian. That's gonna have to go back in the wash. There's marks on it. Oh, I need to pop my hip. Oh, I need to pop my hip. You're not gonna pop. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. I don't know what he's screaming about in there, but all right. Okay. No.
Well, it has to be a very flat no, or else they might get the idea that no actually means yes, because apparently that's just how shit works now. So you gotta be very direct. Um, I'm working on getting my apartment halfway back together. So... And because my friends want to, we're going to a historical building tour today, historical house tour. And then we're going to come back here and probably have some food, maybe. It was a librarian shirt. Is my dating life existent right now? Um, no, because I work Tuesday through Saturday. I have a 50 hour work week. I am generally exhausted. Uh, and I have a family member dying right now, and I really don't think that that's very fair to bring somebody else into my life at this point in time, because that's just a lot. Um, because, you know, then it becomes, okay, so he dies in a month after we met. Do you come to the funeral? Do you not? How the hell are you supposed to support me for that? I don't know. And I don't even know what's going on, so I don't think that that's fair to that person. Um, on top of barely having time for myself, let alone any. I don't want you to take all of my pain away. Um, going through losing a family member is something that everybody has to do. Everybody is going to have to deal with that pain at some point, and learning how to deal with it is better than just not having it in the first place. And if I didn't feel pain over losing him, then it means that I didn't love him enough anyway. So... That's a hang up. <sighs> laundry is never ending, uh, and I haven't done laundry in three weeks, uh, which is awful. Um, so, <laughs> it's just a lot. Um, yeah. Just tired. I, yeah. Keeping up with laundry is, like, the worst. Yeah, I'm tired because I just finished my work week. And I want to have a lazy day, but I can't have a lazy day, you know? Uh, I don't know. I uh, probably busy. I don't know where he is. But that's fine. That's a him thing. <sighs> oh. TikTok's not the place to do it. So here's the thing. Gentlemen, about getting women. Um, you don't really need to get women, because the thing is, we're not objects. So when you even phrase it like that, it's weird. Um, if you mean date women, uh, I'm trying to think of how to put this nicely. 
Throwing compliments at women that you don't know on the internet is generally not the way to get their attention. Um, it comes across as creepy. A lot. Uh, well, desperate. Which is fine if you are. Again, you do you. but it's not always the best look. So throwing compliments at women or asking super personal questions right off the bat uh, gives serial killer vibes a lot. Not saying you are, but it just gives vibes. Women can back me up on this. Um, if you're trying dating apps, generally like being your genuine self works. Don't, Try to be somebody different. Make sure that all of your photos, and this is again, coming from one person. So women can back me up on this one. Um... Don't make all your photos of you drinking, even if you do go out a lot and you have a lot of those photos. Make sure you have some, like, normal photos because we don't want to see that the only thing you do is just get drunk on the weekends. Like, have a life. You may not have one, but make it look like you have one, you know? Like, I don't have one right now, but I have photos of me doing shit that's not drinking. Well, I mean, I don't drink, but I have photos of me that's not at a party. Also, don't do the whole, no photos of you and another girl. Absolutely not. Um, unless it's your obvious sister or your mother. Fine. Little weird to have your mom on a dating app, but you do you if it's a good photo. Um, particularly vacation photos, like family vacation photos that are obvious family vacation photos, fine. The other thing is, Pay attention, and this this may just be a me thing. No, hunting and fishing, eh. If it's your hobby, you. So we don't want to see just a photo of your car. We don't care, generally. Gym photos, fine. As long as it's not every single photo of you at the gym. Because the only thing we're going we're gonna to think is that, that that's all you do. And you're quite vain. Um... My point being, though, make sure if you're going to respond to one of her prompts, uh, make sure that you read the prompt in its entirety before you respond to it. And here's, here's my biggest piece of advice. Read it. Process what she said. And then respond. And before you hit send... Read what you wrote again. You wrote again. Okay. Personally, on my dating app that I don't use anymore, I used to have a thing that said, we will not work out if, and I specifically said, you use a book or librarian pickup line on me because I am so sick of being sexualized for my job. The amount of men that responded to that prompt with a book or librarian pickup line, which immediately tells me you don't understand the word no. Don't do that. It's not cute. It's not funny. She said no. Apparently, we are all too simple for reading comprehension in our 20s, but... Like, if a guy was like, hey, I'm an accountant, I'd be like, fuck, I'm gonna make an accountant joke, and then his profile said, please don't do that, I would be like, oh, okay, yeah, no, you said no, that's fine. Yeah. So, no means no, even if it's a dating app. 
prompt, gentlemen. Uh, does it mean, hi, push my buttons? So. Also, and this is from personal experience here, because I help my male friends make dating app profiles. This has happened three times now. If you are a homeowner and you are a proud homeowner, I have a friend who is a homeowner in his early 20s. Great for him. Love that. Don't make that your entire personality. On a dating app. Okay. Just had to be said. Is it attractive that a man has a house? That's pretty awesome. Cool for you. We don't really care. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he was going to do that. I changed it. Just be yourself. Show us you have some hobbies. Girls do like money. I mean, at this point in life, our entire society runs off money, unfortunately. So do we like money? Obviously, we have to have it to live and eat at this point in life. But... No, because you're talk how much a money money a person makes over dating them. Why is it only about men? Females do the same thing. One thing about this statement: calling somebody a female is generally a red flag. Okay? And yes, women do the same thing. We can be very general. Unfortunately, that's how shit works. I, unfortunately, don't scroll through women's dating app profiles. Have never done that. Have never looked at them. So I can only speak to what I have seen. If you want to do a live stream and talk about women's dating app profiles, that's a you thing. I was talking about men's because I had a question about male dating app profiles. So, that's the best I got. I was telling you what's not attractive to most women. And I say most because I have lots of friends on dating apps and I'm in my 20s. Be yourself. Even if you have a weird ass fucking hobby that you think is, and I only say weird ass because like people, general people look at my hobbies and they're like, what the fuck is that shit? You know, and you're like, what girl in their 20s likes to sew? But somebody out there is like, hmm, cool, she's got a passion. Afraid to show that she has this thing that she likes to do, you know? The amount of dumb shit that men say to me or have said to me, I don't go on dating apps recently, um, have said to me on dating apps is painful. Um... then that's something you got to work in, work on by yourself. 
Because the thing is that what a lot of men, and I think this is a very large disparity between men and women on dating apps, and I'm saying this based off of the people that I know that are on dating apps, is that women, my female friends that are on dating apps, um, you to live life and do their own thing and go to therapy and do this and this, that, and the other thing. And the dating app isn't the center of their life. And this is, again, generalizing. Their dating is just a casual thing. And they're like, oh, I got a date. Cool. I'm going to go. You know, it's not the center of everything. My guy friends who are on dating apps, it becomes the sole thing that they are looking for and doing. And I don't know if that's a mentality difference between men and women. I don't know. But when you become so desperate in that search and you're not continuing to work on yourself and do things and better yourself and learn and do all that stuff, it becomes a total different mentality to the way that we view dating apps. We view dating apps. Would that not be because men have, women have options? I don't know. Again, I don't, I don't know the reason of it happening. I don't think dating, personally, I don't think dating should be the center of anybody's world. Unless all you want to do is get married. You know? Like, the center of my world is not whether or not I'm single. I don't really give a shit. I got, I got family stuff I'm dealing with. I got my own shit I'm dealing with. I have my cats. I have work. You think women are more obsessed with marriage than men. Most of my female friends do not want to get married. Actually, the majority of my women, my friends that are women, do not want to get married. Whether or not I decide to use dating apps in my future will be my own decision and my own business. Yeah, Morgan, it's just a piece of paper. Whoop de doo. Exactly. Everyone has options, but if you're obsessive about finding somebody, that very much comes across in the way you speak to people. Like in the last couple months, uh, got stood up because he literally messaged a woman on a dating app that he had already scheduled a date with that he was looking for a wife. They hadn't even been on a single date yet. Don't do that. Just in general, just don't, don't do that. That's, that's definitely one way to scare a woman off, you know? And I had to explain to him why that didn't work. It was a very long conversation. Because he was not getting it. As I said, bud man, whether or not I decide to use dating apps will be my own personal decision, my own business. Please don't tell me what to do and what not to do. You do your life, I'll do my life. It's a whole cool thing, you know? Don't start a date with marriage. That should be painted on something somewhere, I feel like. Hobby Lobby would sell it. 
but yeah. Cool. You you do, you go right ahead. It was a generalization. People are free. Wow. Cool. I like Hobby Lobby personally. No, I don't. Um, I don't agree with Hobby Lobby's decisions as a company, but that's a me thing. If you want to shop there, you do you. Also, I used to work in a craft store, so like I generally go to the one I used to work in. So if I go to a craft store, I haven't been to a craft store in probably like a solid five months. So are you speaking to me? I'm not a deer. Um, so, have any guys ever turned me down on a dating app? I haven't used dating apps actively since college, which was like four years ago. Um, yes, a long time ago. I miss the apron. I do not miss the apron. Um, that lime green piece of shit was awful. Uh, it has so many holes in it by the time I left. But, uh, yeah. We were just talking about you, Adam. Someone asked where you were this morning. I said probably sleeping in or doing something. Are you calling me an a-hole? You can say asshole on here. It doesn't, doesn't block you from that. I was, I was crap. See? Why is it creepy if we compliment women? There's a difference between complimenting women and complimenting women in a creepy way. Um, yeah. So, and again, think of this from a female perspective, if you can. A guy coming up to you and being like, oh my God, you're really pretty. Good on you. Good on ya. A guy coming up to you and being like, oh my God, you're so pretty, I want you to have my babies. Do you see the level of difference there? That's a very, very large difference and I made it very obvious on that one. Do you see do you see the creepy? Like, wow, okay, you're already thinking about... <laughs> so, yes. Compliment things that people have control over. Because also, if you compliment a woman on her body, it comes across as very... very superficial. I generally, if I'm going to compliment somebody, compliment them on their choices. So I'm not like, oh my God, I like your face. It's more so, oh my gosh, I love your hair. We have choices over what we do with our hair. We have choices over what we're wearing. You know, we have choices with our makeup. If I'm going to compliment somebody, generally I go with that. Do you know what I mean? 
Because sometimes we can't control what our body looks like. I can't control my height. I can't control my face. You know, like I I can't control what my hands look like, what my arms look like. That's just what we go. Yeah, focus more on what they can control. Or generally go with something that comes across nice to anybody. Like, oh my God, you have a really nice smile. Boom. Great one. Solid. Don't do this. So what's up? You got a man or what? No, I don't. I don't want one. Thank you. I don't get another human being, first of all. Second of all, the way to approach a woman, particularly one educated, is not so what's up. Don't be that guy. Don't be a yo ma, because I get that. I work in Detroit. I do get that. I love that you have teeth. Adam, good morning. Welcome. Love that for you. Um, no, I will not marry you. Thank you. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what to say to that. Um, I, mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. I never say thank you when people comment. Uh, yeah, because I'm not on here to get compliments. I'm on here to have a conversation. So imagine having a conversation with somebody about something like super deep, like I'm discussing archival material and the necessity of being um, bringing that archival material up to current standards, you know, and stuff like that. And somebody's like, hi, you're pretty. Hi, you're pretty. Hi, you're pretty. And I'm like, I'm talking here. Do um, you know what I mean? when we're talking about something serious or I'm like, my grandfather's dying and men are like, I want to fuck you. Hi, I want to fuck you. And you're like, I, okay. Huh. Totally negating what I'm saying right now. You know, like I got a brain. I'm using it. We're having a good discussion here back and forth. I don't want to pause the discussion to have to go over that. Also, yes, compliments are meant to be given, not to get something in return. So if you're complimenting somebody and somebody doesn't turn around and say thank you, that's not a mark on you. That person may be uncomfortable with what you said. And that is fine because you're not giving a compliment to get a thank you. You're giving a compliment to make somebody else feel good. And again, if that's a compliment that makes somebody feel uncomfortable, I have certain compliments that I don't like, and people continue to say those things. Um, yep, to me, not a compliment. So it comes across as very creepy, maybe. It's not comfortable. I'm not comfortable with that. So I'm not going to say thank you because I'm not comfortable with that. I must be fun at parties. Uh, I am, actually. Thank you. You're single because you literally think you know everything. Dude, if I knew everything, I would not be working where I'm working. Okay? I don't know everything. Uh, and I'm single because I want to be. There is a whole thing, like, my entire life doesn't revolve around whether or not I'm dating somebody. Uh, I don't have time. What compliment doesn't she like? She didn't say. You hate single. That's cool. I like being single. I like doing my own thing. I got a really long work week. I don't have a lot of time for other people. And I really don't have to justify why I want to be single. You know? What I do with my life, for my reasons, is my own thing. And I don't understand why people get so offended when they're like, Ugh, but you don't want to date somebody? No.
What are my thoughts on chivalry? It's dead. Um, I have time for Morgan and Adam. Uh, <laughs> barely. <laughs> I'm building my career, dude. I have so much networking I have to do. So when I'm off work, I'm still in the work mindset. I'm networking. I'm doing a ton of shit. You know? Being single and being content with it should be normalized. However, it is still not in a lot of places. Um, and you know, what's super cool is when I'm networking or when I'm with my department at work, not a single one of them has ever asked me, are you dating anybody right now? Because I got shit to do, places to be, things to generally fuck up because I'm still in that stage of work and I don't know exactly what I'm doing all of the time. And I'm still learning, you know? That's just how shit works. I'm also in my 20s. I literally am still learning how to be a functioning human being in society. And like, I don't have time. Chivalry's dead, that sounds like a challenge. Um, it wasn't, but I can tell you that the my boss is an older man at work. The amount of times this, and I'm just saying this in general, this is a generalized version of chivalry. My boss will not let my hand touch a door handle if we are walking in the same direction. However, every single date I've ever been on opening my own car door, walking into the own building on myself. And I'm not saying that that's something men have to do, because again, it's not a problem. But if we're taking a very generalized version of chivalry, that's it. Where do you find one of them? Unfortunately, you don't. They don't exist anymore, depending on what model you're looking for. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Or, I'm trying to think of another one. The bare minimum of like walking on the street and making sure that you're not walking. Do you know the street rule? Everybody should know the street walk rule. Adam, do you know the street rule? <laughs> the sidewalk rule, whatever you want to call it. I call it the street rule. I literally don't want to pick up line things. About the street rule. I literally don't want to pick up line things. It all comes down to manners. Sidewalk rule, street rule. Guy walks on the on the side nearest to the street. Yeah. Chivalry, manners. I have had one man that I have dated ever do that. One man. Okay, but what about you and Rissa? Um... Depends on who feels like being chivalrous that day. So the car gets you first. I think it wasn't originally thought of like the car like hitting you. I was just thinking more of like puddles with the car hitting the puddles so she doesn't get wet, you know, but like, yeah. Yes. 
it did start actually because of that. People used to use chamber pots. They get dumped out of windows, actually. So the gutter was disgusting because that's excrement that was dumped into the gutter. And that's why it was started, because that's where the gross stuff is. So you let her walk with her skirts on the inside, just so you know. Men used to lay their coats over puddles. Look how far we've fallen. Uh, we fell a lot faster than people thought, too. I don't need you to lay your coat on a puddle. That's I can walk through a puddle. I'm a grown woman. Well, that's the other part is I think just like portions of chivalry or things that were considered chivalrous don't really apply to things nowadays. Like I'm a grown woman. I got puddle boots. I can walk through a puddle. Not a huge deal. I don't have really long skirts touching the ground. I was taught etiquette by my southern grandmother. Long time ago. So was my brother and my cousin. Uh, the cats are sleeping. There's actually, well, there's, there's one right there who was asleep and then just, I said cat, so. It's pretty much down to holding doors now, which is a very polite thing to do. Or like, if she's got something heavy, like carry it. I don't know, I'm not a dude. I'm going to run to the restroom. Oh my god, my knee, why? Hey, buddy. What's going on, dude? Oof, my knee. A lot of times it's an insult if you ask a woman, can I carry that for you? No, what's an insult is when guys grab it. Just grab it without asking. The ask is the part that's nice. Consent doesn't just have to apply to sex. My knee fell asleep. I hurt my knee really bad. Um... <laughs> Look at my bruise. It's so impressive. Yeah, no, nah, I hurt my knee really bad, so it's just like kind of pain. It gets stiff. I haven't bought leggings in years. Okay, how's she going? Do you know what's more attractive in a dude, I think, than anything else? And I don't know. Ladies, you can back me up on this. Ladies that are straight or people that date men. I should just say that. People that date men. Um, is when a man can admit he's wrong. You know, especially when you first start talking to somebody, because I've had so many men 
that are like, oh my god, you're a librarian. Do you like do cute little story times and shit? And I'm like, that's not what a librarian is. Like, I'm a different type. I do this, I do that, the other thing. And instead of being like, oh, well, I thought that blah, blah, blah. Just being like, oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. Not being defensive, you know? That is so nice. That is so nice. I very much appreciate it. Or like, like I have photos of me holding archival material and then being like, you're doing your job wrong. You're not wearing gloves. Well, actually, it's not practice in the archival world to wear gloves. Have alcohol cleaned hands. You are fine to touch the thing because gloves lead to the further spread of mold and also dropping things. Thanks for mansplaining my own job to me, you know? Gloves have been found to damage things more. Um, sometimes. Sometimes not. What does a librarian do? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that is. And I'm pointing that out because he spelled it wrong. Uh, not because I'm an ass. I don't know what a librarian does. A librarian uh, does a lot of things depending on what type of librarian you are. I am an archival librarian, and so I work with uh, records and basically museum materials every day, and I help people research. So, that's what I do. I find things. I was about to make a joke. You would think that I'm a Hufflepuff. We're particularly good at finding. Um, for those of you who have ever watched Star Kid, you'll get it. Um, I don't want it thanks you can you can keep it i need to eat breakfast my kitchen is not clean there are so many thoughts i already started the washer i can hear it running You just didn't catch the joke. That's the thing. Uh, I actually don't have eggs right now. I'm just going to do oatmeal. Mushrooms do sound kind of good, though. Mm. I haven't grocery shopped. Again, I've been working for three weeks straight, so I just was doing the bare minimum grocery shopping. So I really don't have much of anything. <sighs> oh. Really? You just woke up and had to say that? And you're going back to sleep. Okay. Were you having a dream? Do I eat out a lot? Um, no, not really. I eat at work a lot, but I take my lunch. I just eat at work a lot. Okay. What? What? Okay. I have this cut on my hand that's like starting to peel and it's really bothering me, but I don't want to 
peel it the rest of the way because it's not healed yet. And it's really ang making me angry. I don't want to pick it off because then I'll end up with a scar on my hand. And I really don't want a scar on my hand. Um... Um, it sort of goes up into a bun. I'm still very upset about my haircut, to be honest. I'm, I'm very upset about it, and I don't know what to do. The story at box at work in the box corner caught my hand and cut it. <laughs> you know, it's not... Ooh. What's wrong with my haircut? Uh, it's curled, so it's going to be hard to see. This is the first time I've gotten my hair cut in a year and a half. Um, so she cut a shelf of hair. I asked for layers. I got this entire piece of my hair cut to the same length. Actually, even more of it because there's still more coming. Just the whole thing. Just one length. And I hate it because I asked for layers like this side where I have nice little layers going all the way down. Um, I didn't want a shelf. And then, uh, and then, um, and here's the kicker. Oh, it's an inch and a half longer on one side than it is the other. I don't trust myself to trim it. Um, I can't keep it up out of my face because I can't wear a bun every day at work. I don't like doing that. Um, it doesn't stay in a ponytail because she cut that piece so short. Uh, it's in my face 24-7, and I paid about $60 for this. So. I just am very upset about it for multiple reasons, um, which make me sound like a vain asshole, but I am not going back to the same person to ask them to fix it because I don't trust them to fix it and actually have it not continue to get worse. Sorry, he was asking for kissies. I love how I'm having a serious conversation, and it's just this. Um, for those, I'm going to make breakfast in a second, um, but for those of you who are unaware, uh, I went through, oh, oh, okay. I went through eating disorder recovery, um, about a year ago, still in recovery. I have not changed my look since before when I was sick. Um, and thank you. Um, did you just lick my ear? That was very uncomfortable. Okay, you can still have kissies. Um, and, and I have not been feeling very good about my body lately, to be honest. Um, I really haven't cared much about how I look, I, which is unusual for me. I love clothes. I love fashion. I love making outfits. You know, <clears throat> I love doing makeup. I love doing my hair normally. And I just have not really cared about it at all, um, partially because I work in a basement now, um, partially because my weight has been fluctuating a lot lately and I've been struggling with eating um, because of stress, which is a terrible thing because when I get stressed, I go back into the eating disorder mentality, which is a really hard thing to fight. Um, thank you. You are so great. I love you so much. Um, and partially because I have a family member that's dying right now um, and I don't know what... Um, so I went 
to try to get my hair cut into something that I thought would make me feel a little bit better and make me look a little more mature. And again, this is a touchy subject. I look very much younger than I am and I am working in a, okay, we'll put it this way. This has turned into a rant. So just indulge me for a moment. Um, I'm not gonna tell you about my eating disorder because that's between me and my body. Um, and so imagine getting thrown into, I started working in a new library, uh, after I got laid off from my old position, um, in January. And they put me in one of the branches. Uh, so I was working in a not so safe area. I had things stolen from me. I had to get walked to my car after work every night. And I was working with a very difficult community to work with. Um, but no, it was not by a skate park. Adam. That was the last one that laid me off. Uh, this one was next to a liquor store uh, with drunk people. I shit you not. It was not a great, I mean, it was a good, like the people that worked there were amazing. The community was hard. It was difficult. Um... And so to go from that to my new department, because I was in a holding period until I got period until I got to my new department, um, which is this archive uh, at the main building, it's the big fancy one that was built in the 20s. It's super fancy. It's right across the street from the top art museum in the United States. I got thrust into this community of Detroit socialites. So I am networking. I'm meeting with, you know, I have to go to galas. I have to go to these arts concerts. I'm part of societies now. I'm meeting commissioners and, and all these super important people, right? So to get thrust from working there to working here, to also being in my 20s, I don't know how to be this person that they expect me to be. I don't know how to network. I'm straight out of judges, the commissioner's board, the mayor, the, the fire chief, like all of these things. So I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Um... So that's a lot of stress in and of itself. I have meetings with super important people all of the time. I'm meeting PhD candidates like five times a day, you know, and I'm helping them do what they need to do to keep the city running. Which sounds a little crazy, but I promise it makes sense. And, you know, so to, to, to move from that to doing this, and then also, I don't, I don't look my age. I'm aware. Um, I have a lot of people that do not take me seriously. I had a researcher call me a little girl the other day. I have, you know, and it's all that stuff. So I was trying to get a haircut that might make me look a little bit more mature, change my look a little bit, because I'm feeling a little, I was feeling a little out of my, not comfortable with my body, you know? Um, I'm in my 20s, I'm 26. Well, I'll be 26 next month. Um, and it's, so it's just, I was very much trying for that, and then to have something like this happen, and I look like a toddler cut my hair, for lack of a better way of saying it, it makes me even more uncomfortable with myself. I can't style my hair the way I used to. I used to look really professional. Now it's just in my face all of the time. Um, there's a lot going on, so. Uh, I have been gone because I've been dealing with a lot of work stuff. 
dealing with a lot of work stuff. I work 50 hours a week. I have a lot of stress going on. I have a family member that's dying. I'm dealing with all this very personal stuff that I'm talking about. So it's, it's a lot. Um, I am aware that people tell me all of the time that looking young will make me feel so much better when I'm older. But to be honest, I don't give a shit what 60 year old me thinks. I'm working on my career. I'm trying to get people to take me seriously. I'm doing the important things right now. And I don't even know if I'm going to make it to 60 at this point because the world is ending like every 20 days. So I really don't. It's not a great thing. And I've talked to other people who look young and people get so tired of hearing, you'll love it when you're older. Well, I'm not older right now. I'm not older right now. And I do not give a shit what 60-year-old me thinks. 60-year-old me better have a lot of shit to say. That's all I'm saying. So, yeah. It's just a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I loathe it because people have told me that since I was like six. Um... It's just a lot. <laughs> also, do I have anybody around my age in here? I just have a question for you about being 25 turning 26. Just a, just a quick question. Because I've talked to some of my other friends and they also feel this. So I would just love to know if you feel this. You. Okay. Can you feel your brain all of a sudden just like shit makes sense and you think logically all of the time. Can you feel that maturity? Because that's supposed to happen around 25 and you can just feel the switch. Do you know what I am a human being? What the fuck is that? What is that? It's so uncomfortable. Like we could just not do that and I'd be fine. It weirds me out. I'm not ready to feel that again at 35. I thought I'd be done by now. We're hitting reality. It's all of a sudden I just have consciousness, you know? It's like, ugh, gross. And then nobody talks about it. That's the thing. I talked about it with my therapist, and she's like, that's normal. And I'm like, why didn't nobody tell me? Jennifer. Um, that still doesn't happen. It, when it happens, it's, it's fucking weird. It's It's weird. Don't know how I feel about it. I wouldn't really say it's enlightenment because I still have some stupid ass thoughts, but like, it's a change in thought and, and I'm confused. Well, like, not confused. It's just uncomfortable because I have these thoughts and I'm just like, whoa, where did adult me come from? You know? It'll get, it'll get easier. It's already been getting easier, but I felt it like a couple months ago where I was like, whoa. My entire train of thought has now changed. And I function differently. Huh. Who knew? You know? Like, what the fuck? It's fun. To th I, I know, we need to eat breakfast. Um... I got a lot of shit going on. And that's the thing is people always come on and they're like, it's, it's very confusing. Where are my slippers? My feet are cold. My feet are cold. Severus, where did I put my slippers? Oh, there they are. Sorry. <sighs> the world is at my disposal. I don't know about that, but... Yesterday, I almost locked myself in a vault, so, like, again, I don't know about that. I have my moments. I'm going to make some oatmeal. Yes, I'm doing it in a mug.
knowledge is at my disposal. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working on that. Why is my microwave sounding funny? Oh, the plate's off. Oh my god. I don't have eggs, Adam. Well, it's gonna make a joke. Um, I'm not going to because <laughs> debatable topics. <sighs> I don't have eggs. I didn't go to the grocery store yet. How have I been feeling? Exhausted. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm annoyed. I mean, not really, but I'm annoyed with my hair and myself. Hello. Really? Oh, God. You. Okay. Oh, oh okay. Just like all the way up in there. Oh, oh. You're standing on my hand. Or, or no, you're laying on my hand. I can't do much about that. Oh, oh. Yeah, that was my stomach growling. Okay, oh, okay. Um, okay. Go on vacation. <laughs> I have to get up now. The microwave is beckoning. No, I'm like actually serious. I need to get up now. Thank you. Oh my God, my brain in my hand. No, I don't like boats. Like, actually, I don't like boats. Um, oatmeal? What kind do I want? What kind should I get? Apples and cinnamon, cinnamon spice. Apple cinnamon sounds kind of good. That yeah, seems legit. Why is my dating life relevant to the conversation we are having? The one vacation spot I'd like to experience? Um, go visit their libraries. I have one specific book that I want to go see, and it's in Edinburgh, so. I'm eating breakfast in bed. I don't give a shit. It's my house. And you do. Ooh, this is very cinnamon spicy. Um, I can smell it. Nope. Uh, it is oatmeal. Yeah. My pronouns are she, her. Thanks for asking. Thanks, Morgan. I'm actually not a blueberry person. I don't like blueberries. What I've had going on, I eat so loudly. Yeah, I had a jaw injury back in 2016, so unfortunately, that is how I eat. I apologize that it offends everybody so much they have to comment on it. Um, 
it was a side effect of surgery. And unfortunately, that's just what I'm stuck with. Um, really doesn't bother me all that much. So. I'm not going to stop eating. Thank you. I wasn't really self-conscious about my eating until people started to point it out when I eat on here, which kind of sucks because, like, you should never comment on somebody else's eating because it's none of their business. Thanks, Morgan. Also, I can't control the fact that I had a jaw injury. Like, that shit just sucks, so... I do actually eat funny. Um, I chew on the side of my mouth because the 